Welcome to our new YouTube video. Today we're talking about home security cameras. They're very helpful for keeping an eye on your home and can even provide evidence if something bad happens. But with so many options, how do you pick the right one? And how do you set it up? Don't worry, we're here to help. First, we'll explain some important words related to security cameras. This will help you make a good choice. Then, we'll talk about 10 common mistakes people make when setting up their cameras and how to avoid them. By the end of this video, you'll know a lot about home security systems and how to set them up properly. So keep watching, hit the like button, and remember to subscribe for more helpful videos. In the context of security cameras, the term DORI is used, standing for detection, observation, recognition, and identification. It describes the roles a camera can play, determined by its placement and resolution. When planning your camera system, it helps to use a floor plan of your property to outline the surveillance areas. The first area is D for detection. Cameras here should spot a person without needing to see detailed information about them or what they're doing. For example, a person in this area might just be passing by. Next is the O for observation. Cameras here should see basic details like a person's clothing or what they're doing. You'd want to know which way they're facing if they're holding anything and why they might be on your property. A person in the observation area isn't necessarily a direct threat. Finally, we have R and I for recognition and identification. Recognition means you should be able to identify a known person, like a friend or family member, by their appearance and behavior. Identification suggests that the footage could be used to identify anyone. The main difference between recognition and identification is how familiar the person watching the video is with the subject. On my property, the identification zone includes places where a person could potentially damage my property. This means you want an identification zone near each entry point to your house. The main difference in these zones is how much physical area each image pixel covers. If you're using a zoom camera, each meter will have more pixels for a person in the frame compared to a wide-angle camera. This matches the general guidelines for pixel density that you should aim for in each zone type. A common misunderstanding many of us have is thinking that having a wider field of view with our security cameras is always better. It makes sense, right? You would think that it allows for more comprehensive surveillance, but in reality, it's not that simple. Wide-angle cameras are excellent when it comes to detection and observation. They can cover a larger area, giving you a broad overview of a particular scene. However, when it comes to identification, they can pose a unique set of challenges, mainly because a wider field of view often results in a lower concentration of pixels on a given target, making it much harder to accurately identify specific details or individuals. So, it's not always the best idea to rely solely on these types of cameras for all your surveillance needs. So, what's the solution? Well, a more balanced approach can help. Try covering as much of your observation zone as possible with a single wide-angle camera to provide an overall view of the situation. Then, for your identification zones, use additional cameras with narrower fields of view. These cameras can provide the necessary level of detail for identification purposes. This method gives you a comprehensive surveillance solution that effectively balances the need for both wide observation and detailed identification. When setting up your security cameras, finding the right height is key. You don't want them too low, someone could simply reach up and disable them. But you also don't want them so high that you only get a view of the top of people's heads when they come into the identification range. A good rule of thumb for mounting cameras is around 3 meters or about 10 feet high. So, unless you're a professional, it's probably not a great idea to mount your cameras on a second-story roofline. Another common mistake people make when setting up their security cameras is improper positioning. You see if you aim your camera so that half of its field of view is obstructed by a wall, it's not going to be very useful. At night, this can even cause problems with exposure due to the bright reflection of the infrared night vision LEDs off the wall. And if you have your horizon in the middle of your image, you're essentially cutting your usable resolution in half. Instead, aim your camera at what you want to capture. If you're not sure how to get the right field of view, a very focal camera with a motorized zoom lens can help. The real purpose is to let you mount your camera where you need it, and then adjust the field of view to cover exactly what you need without wasting any of the image on a wall or some other obstruction. This can be particularly helpful in narrow side yards where maximizing the camera's vertical field of view usually means you also get an increased horizontal field of view, which might just end up staring at a wall. So remember, 
Aim your cameras properly and you'll get the most out of your security system. A common mistake when setting up surveillance is not having enough coverage. It's absolutely essential to cover every entrance to your home within an identification zone, but it's equally important to cover any route that could allow someone to reach your camera undetected. If such a route exists, there's a risk of someone disabling your camera without being recorded. Certain spots, like the inside corner of a building, can be covered by a single camera. But in other places, this isn't possible. In these cases, you'll need to strategize to ensure any uncovered paths are in the field of view of another camera. To avoid this mistake, use video surveillance design software like the IP Video System Design Tool. It's me, and I provide a visual representation of your camera's coverage and pixel density, ensuring all potential entry points are covered. This helps in effective planning and guarantees comprehensive surveillance of your property. Now that we've covered camera positioning, let's go into some common mistakes you might make when selecting your camera. Stay tuned for our next video, where we'll continue discussing common mistakes in security camera installation and how to avoid them. This two-part series will conclude with the next segment, filled with even more valuable tips.